knew in advance what would happen. So it's not true that they were hooked. Mm -hmm. They hooked the heroin, if you like. But they talk about themselves as if uh, they were fish, and a fisherman had come and uh, had caught them with a hook. And in fact, in Britain, there was a, a campaign by the government against smoking in which it was uh, people were displayed as having fishing hooks in their lips uh, with regard to tobacco. Uh -huh. so, that, so that they were actually just swimming along in life and along comes um, uh, the tobacco and hooks them. Uh -huh. Het mes deed het, de heroïne uh, nam mijn leven over, uh, verslaafd raken aan, uh, aan, aan, aan sigaretten en dan doen alsof je net als een vis aan een haak wordt geslagen en zelf geen zeggenschap hebt. But, now, I'm raised by a mother who's addicted. My father is addicted. Um, but I'm also living in a neighborhood where every father and mother is addicted. Oké, okay. I have my own respon uh, responsibility, but... You agree with me that it's quite difficult for me to escape that situation. Well, uh, there's no neighborhood in which everyone is addicted. There's no neighborhood in which 100% of people have, uh, et, for example, opiate addiction. Uh -huh. And it is possible for people to claim that they are not addicted precisely because they saw what it did to other people. So they make a rational choice saying, I'm not going to do that because I see what it means. Uh -huh. It is still a choice. And of course... But a difficult one. Uh, I, 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 no doubt it is, but who does not have difficult choices in life? Uh -huh. I mean, have you, could anyone say that he has not had difficult choices? I don't say it's easy, I say it's necessary, which is not at all the same thing. And of course, it is certainly true, I'm not... I don't want to sound completely without sympathy. It is perfectly true that, say, in Britain, where opiate addiction, heroin addiction, is now quite widespread, if you look at the vast majority of the people who are addicted, they come from broken homes, they're impoverished, or relative, I should say relatively impoverished, uh, they're very poorly educated, uh, they have no religious belief, they have no culture or no cultural activity that is of any uh, transcendent meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, their prospects, economic prospects, are poor, they're unskilled, they're uneducated. If they go to work, they will probably earn very little more than if they don't go to work. They have been persuaded uh, by uh, propaganda over the years that humble uh, work, repetitive work, is demeaning, uh, to them, to their egos. And so, of course, heroin is attractive to them. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, uh, it gives them a, a what uh, Freud described as the oceanic feeling of reconciliation with the world and they feel at peace and so on, when all around them is social chaos and so on. So I can understand all that, but still it is a choice and still it is not a medical problem. Uh -huh. Waar je ook opgroeit en hoe je ook opgroeit, uh, Don Rimpel blijft erop hameren dat je nog steeds keuzes maakt en die kunnen dan soms moeilijk zijn en dat het nog steeds de ideeën zijn die maken dat je je slachtoffer voelt, meer dan de omstandigheden. Have you, do you have an explanation for the fact that ideas became so dominant in this discourse? Yes, I, well, I, I suppose it's a sociological um, um, explanation and that is the expansion of tertiary education which has been more or less a disaster <laughs> and, uh, uh, and you can see it in that in american countries most people think that for example um, uh, latin american guerrilla movements are the response of impoverished peasants to their situation i don't believe that to be true i believe it uh, to be a uh, a, a, a consequence of the expansion of tertiary education in uh, Latin American countries beyond the capacity of the economy to provide the people who come out of the universities with the work that they think is, uh, that they are worthy of as university graduates. We have to absorb enormous numbers of university graduates now, and one possible way of doing it, of course, is putting them into... Uh, bureaucracies, 
so that we now in Britain, for example, have uh, more than one educational bureaucrat per school teacher. Uh -huh. And we are actually talking about hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. Uh, so that actually uh, the point about these ideas is that they give a justification for uh, large bureaucracies which are supposed to assist the people who are the victims of social problems. Ja, mensen zijn de slachtoffers van sociale problemen en nooit iets anders dan dat. But it all has to do with Marxism and, 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 and the fact that our thinking in the last century was dominated by Marxist thinking in a way. Well, I, I think it's certainly true that we have uh, thought in those terms and we still do think largely in those terms. Um, and Mrs. Thatcher, for example, was quite clearly an economic determinist, except that she thought what was uh, what Marx thought was bad, she thought was good, <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, so she, uh, whether she was in the secrecy of her heart an economic determinist, I don't know, but she gave the impression of being an economic determinist. That if, for example, you uh, made all relations market relations, then everything would follow. Uh, everything good would follow from that. Uh -huh. uh, and I, I don't believe that to be true. Uh, but it is certainly true that, if not Marxist, then socialist thought has uh, dominated uh, uh, and prepared the way for, uh, for present developments, yes. We gaan even over naar zijn roman Testament van een seriemoordenaar, de filantrope, man die een serie moorden heeft gepleegd. Een veganist overigens. Ik moest meteen aan Volkert van de G denken en die zichzelf rechtvaardigt door bijvoorbeeld uit te leggen dat wij de belastingbetalers misschien nog wel veel grotere moordenaars zijn dan hij. Een satirische roman, zoals wordt gezegd in de traditie van Voltaire van Swift. When did you write this novel and why? I wrote it in 1995 and it suddenly occurred to me, I, I can't remember exactly how, the idea occurred to me that if I put the some of the ideas that I wanted to combat into the mouth of a serial killer, uh -huh. it would be a kind of reductio ad absurdum of of of, uh, of those ideas. Yeah. And so I and I wrote it. I went to Mexico and for about a month and I wrote it. Uh -huh. I, I decided I think if I remember rightly I wrote one thousand four hundred words a day. What what kind of person he is? He is actually a very characteristic, I think, uh, characteristic figure. He is a person who is uh, reasonably well educated. He is a uh, middle uh, manager or a member of the uh, bureaucracy who has a higher opinion of his importance and his capacities uh, than, than is real, but nevertheless feels resentful at his uh, relatively low place and his and his routine in mm -hmm. but he never examines himself and and i think that we have a kind of self absorption without self examination uh, which is very common now mm -hmm.